grow louder. Across the concrete jungle. From scores of fans with belief beginning to rumble. In the parks and the playgrounds, hope builds again. As they sing the names of Sancho. Rashford. Raheem. Kane. The cubs from the clubs that have risen defiant. An alliance of lions with desire to triumph. I think first and foremost we want to excite the fans. We want them to enjoy a good experience in terms of watching an exciting team which is fast, play at an high intensity, but also at the other end, be really streetwise and in good game management to, to win games. And I think if you're winning games, there's, there's a good atmosphere around the place. excited for the future you've got all these young talents coming through and everyone wants to see what they can do we've been really strong we've been really ruthless and you can ask the opposition when they played against it it's been we've made it real tough for them past failure and folly have slowly been banished since a hero stepped forward with talent to manage gareth's gray ghosts exchanged for expectation a shot at redemption. The nation is waiting. I can't say something that was a lifetime's ambition because my ambition was to play for England. But the reality of the role is quite unique. There are only a handful of roles in our country that have that intensity of spotlight. We're fortunate that, generally speaking, we've experienced mainly progression. So I haven't been treated quite the way that some of my predecessors have. Um, but of course that can turn very quickly. With England, every time you play, there's huge expectation whether we're a good team or we're not a good team. So the reality is our European Championship performance historically is, is way behind you know, eight or ten other countries. And, and we know the level of the teams in Europe. There is such depth in European football that you have to perform well. Um, for that period of, of time and perform to your very best. Since he's took over, I think he's felt it's really important for, for the staff and the players to get on and have a good relationship. But I also think that the media and the fans and, and the way that we work now, they, they understand us a lot more and we understand them. As a nation, we've come a lot closer together. It's something that we're, we're hoping we can take forward to an advantage in, in the future. Well, I think the, the main motivation is to, to win a trophy. So whether it's a, at Wembley or not, we know it's going to be tough. Any, any, any game's tough in big tournaments. You have to be able to deal with the pressure and, and mentally the challenge of playing in front of thousands of people, but also being watched by millions of people. We're still improving as a team here. Um, lots of work to be done. It's exciting times for us all, one that we're looking forward to. And if we, we play like we have, to, we'll have a chance. I think that there's um, a growing belief in the group of players. Although predominantly a young group, they're picking up lots of experience of big matches. Several have now played in the Champions League final. Um, quite a few of the squad were involved in the World Cup semi-final. So they're the big game experiences that they need. And um, I think they're enjoying wearing an England shirt. They're not seeing that as a burden. And we're looking forward to seeing what we can go on to achieve over the next few years. Seven games to glory for a side inspired to play as all roads at the Euro lead down Wembley Way. Is this the summer that the three Lions emerge? England is ready. The pride has returned. And they most certainly are. What's up, guys? My name is Jack Wright, also known as Jack Pop Bun Lewis on YouTube, and welcome to another episode of, once again, my European football-themed vlog series of Football's Coming Home, again. 
Yes, for most of you uh, who have just joined us, and if you did miss out on the last episode of this vlog series, uh, just to clarify and just to remind you all um, uh, what this uh, series is all about, I am following the current national football team of England with their youngest ever and most optimistic lineup in in the, the tournament's history of the UEFA European Football Championship which uh, unbelievably from the start of today and in just a few hours time it will be underway with also the first match in the first group of Turkey versus Italy all the way over in Rome. But uh, this video is going to be a lot more um, shorter than the opening episode because I don't want to miss out on the... because uh, of course it's only just going to be on a, according to my phone it's just gone 6.15pm uh, over here in the UK and of course England and um, and uh, over in Italy, they're um, like an hour ahead of us, so um, uh, they're going to be uh, kicking off uh, around about 8 o'clock. But uh, the BBC, uh, of course, BBC Sports are covering this game tonight. And uh, if any of you are wanting to watch the game yourself, uh, all you need to do is uh, just... Um, uh, it's on BBC One at, uh, at 7 o'clock coverage start and then kick off at 8 o'clock and there will also be the opening ceremony to uh, officially start the, uh, once again, the 2020 slash 2021, even though it was delayed from last year because of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic uh, going on across the world. Um, it will be going on around that time. And, uh, but despite it being delayed from over a year ago, hopefully that won't spoil uh, the tournament. And uh, as you know, of course, the theme for this tournament, with the slogan for it being Live It For Real, it's all about the fans in this uh, tournament this year and the connection between uh, not just the fans, but for all the countries participating and, um, and making it more, um, you know, um, accessible to everyone, uh, regardless of uh, uh, race, nationality, country or anything else or size or whatever and um, like I mentioned in the last episode Gareth Southgate manager for England has decided uh, from the last episode that uh, all the England team will take the knee uh, before every match they play in the Euro group stages and um, and to obviously highlighting a very important message but anyway, all that aside, on today's quick, of course, a lot more shorter episode today because of uh, this uh, is the start of the official tournament today here on the 11th of June uh, on, the, on the course on Friday. And uh, like I just mentioned, we, of course, are all talking about the man himself of Gareth Southgate, who is our current manager for the England national football team. Now, over 25 years ago, as you might remember, as you might have just saw the opening uh, footage just then, it showed the penalty that uh, cost England uh, a place not just in the final of, uh, of their home European football championship back in 1996, but uh, he was responsible for England going out in uh, on that uh, dreaded penalty shootout against our arch rivals uh, in the world of not just European football, but also world football of Germany. But we are looking a little bit more deeper into uh, this is the first time that Gareth Southgate is going to be managing England. And also, since a majority of the tournament is going to be held at home, uh, at their home stadium of Wembley, and uh, with the first game against Croatia and this Sunday, we uh, have actually uh, managed to get some footage uh, courtesy of Gabriel Clark from ITV Sports, and he actually got in contact or actually spoke to Gareth a few days ago when he was about to announce his 26-man squad for the upcoming Euro Championship. But not just that, we also have got a very interesting interview that was filmed over a few years ago when England played their 1,000th international football match, which even was one of the qualifying matches for England at the, uh, for the Euros as well when they played North Macedonia. And uh, for any of you who don't know uh, who that was, it was uh, Jeff Hurst, who was one of the former England players, who also was part of the, uh, the team that lifted the uh, Jules Rimet trophy and winning the 1966 World Cup. Also on home soil at Wembley Stadium, at the old Wembley Stadium, where it would have been uh, nicknamed the Twin Towers. 
But uh, for any of you who might not remember what he said, here's a little quick clip of what he did say, or what he thinks of what Gareth Southgate will be like as manager, not just from the last few years of, uh, of him taking charge of England uh, since the last World Cup in Russia in 2018, but what does he also think looking ahead to also this, once again, upcoming European Football Championship? July the 30th, 1966, etched, of course, in English football history. But, uh, yes, do you remember what happened that day? Um, um, but uh, some might not remember just how early that was in your England career. It was cap number, can you remember? It was cap number five or six. Uh, astonish when you look back, I look back in astonishment, quite frankly, myself sometimes. And uh, first, I never dreamt I'd play for England. You're not aware of the magnitude of the occasion, really. I think that's, that's the outstanding note of it, people's memories last forever people still talk about it today next summer euro 2020 a lot of it will be played including the final semi-final at wembley what chance do this current team have do you feel well they've got a chance and i always i'm very positive because of the way we performed in the last couple of seasons under gareth southgate's management i think it's fantastic i spoke to a couple of players they're very complimentary about gareth's leadership and the leadership of the national team as we had in our time is vitally important enjoy the night great to see you thank you well, 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 there are some very interesting words said there by Jeff Hurst there, once again, former England football player and part of the winning World Cup uh, squad back in uh, the World Cup in 1966 when England won against West Germany. And uh, like I did just say uh, earlier on before I played that clip, uh, we've also got another exclusive interview from, once again, Gabriel Clark as he interviewed Gareth Southgate just a few uh, days ago when he announced his 26-man lineup for, once again, the upcoming Euros tournament. And, um, and one of the most important things that he has been addressing, um, uh, depending on also, he has decided that uh, in this year's Euros tournament, he wants a mixture of the players that are playing in his squad. He wants a mixture of not just young players, but also experienced players, which has been a bit doubtful over the last few times that other former England managers have struggled with. And uh, especially when it, we also would dub the golden generation of players, they, uh, they had failed at major tournaments because of also club football rivalries um, over international football rivalry. So, uh, but anyway, like I was going to say, here's an extended interview. Once again, like I said, as Gareth Southgate, manager for the England national football team, spoke to Gabriel Clark of ITV Sport just a few days ago and what he hopes uh, and what he expects from his England football team come once again this summer's European Football Championship. First of all, well, I'm sure he will be looking forward to it. So there we go. That was a quick um, exclusive interview there from Gareth Southgate himself on what he expects from his national football team of England come this Euros tournament, which once again is kicking off uh, from start from tonight. Once again, as I've just to clarify that the first match and the opening match or once again UEFA Euro 2020 is going to be uh, taking place in just a few hours time and that will be taking place all the way in Rome, Italy when Turkey take on Italy. Well, as I said, I was going to say when properly there, but, uh, but that will be the opening match of the tournament. And to also clarify, like I've said already from earlier on, England's first match will be against uh, the team that knocked them out at the last World Cup in Russia in 2018 of Croatia. They have got a quite a good team, but from what I've heard, I think England just edge out on Croatia because some of the players for Croatia have uh, been past their prime now and there's not many of them left. So uh, that could be an advantage for England and not just for all the games uh, to be played at um, Wembley uh, throughout the group stage of this tournament. But um, it can make all the difference. You never know with this tournament like it was over five years ago or all across France. It, uh, it can be very unpredictable, like football normally is. And this also, uh, to clarify, this is also the very first uh, major tournament uh, in, once again, for the European Football Championship that VAR is going to be used. Uh, the video assistant referee 
and uh, from it being first used back at the World Cup but once again in Russia 2018 and I know that it got a bit of it was a bit hit and miss with some decisions um, over um, the last few years but uh, hopefully uh, it will have a, a lot more of a positive um, uh, it will get more positive feedback from most of the decisions that uh, most of the, the referees will make uh, throughout the upcoming matches from this tournament. And well, I was also just going to quickly say, um, as we know, of course, we only are just a few days away from England's first match once again of the group stage of UEFA Euro 2020 uh, slash 2021 for that matter, even though if it's being played a year later. But uh, I am so excited. And of course, as you can tell by my T-shirt, I've got a brand new T-shirt for this episode. I got this wonderful T-shirt uh, with also footballs, um, not footballs coming home. Sorry, I meant to say it's coming home. I know that's the title of my program, Football's Coming Home Again. But uh, yes, I just got this T-shirt especially. And uh, if any of you out there, any other you uh, fellow England football fans would like to uh, buy this, you can. It's from uh, the website of gifthutuk.com. And uh, you can not just get this shirt in white, but you can also get it in a grey colour. And also you can even get a personalised mug as well, which I've also got right here, which I will be uh, using quite a lot of um, uh, over the next few weeks to have a, a cup of tea in or a, or a certain type of drink. And, uh, and also on the back it's got a... Uh, a tactic um, map of um, of football and home together as well. I can just uh, zoom it in just so you uh, you get a better look at it. And um, yeah, and uh, and they're quite cheap actually. Uh, both uh, these uh, two things of uh, of merchandise. And if you do want to get them, like I said, um, the uh, the t-shirt is a. Uh, it can be worn not just by um, uh, men but also women as well. And it's priced at fourteen pounds ninety nine. And if you want to, once again, uh, get the uh, mug of, um, like I said, with the same thing, with the same design of It's Coming Home on it as well, with the England uh, St. George, George flag, it, it's also, you can get it uh, for £9.99, and it's a ceramic mug, and, um, and also it's dishwasher and microwave safe as well, if you happen to use it uh, in any of it, if you want to clean whenever you clean it, or also if you want to eat uh, or cook things in it uh, in particular. But anyway, all that aside, I know this is a lot more uh, fast-paced, uh, this episode, than uh, the last episode that you watched. But uh, with all that covered, that is it for this episode. Uh, I know it's a, a short and sweet one here of, uh, once again, my video vlog series, once again, of Football's Coming Home Again. But the next time you'll see me, we're only just two days away from England starting their campaign in once again to hopefully European glory and hopefully to winning on home soil like they were supposed to have done 25 years ago back at Euro 96. Will it happen? Well, we'll find out uh, with the start of the opening match of England's campaign once again at UEFA Euro 2020 with England versus Croatia and that will be taking place at Wembley Stadium and also from, the, uh, if I can just clarify, also on my app that the match itself will kick off at 2 o'clock in the afternoon and also um, ITV are also um, uh, ITV Sport are responsible for broadcasting coverage of the match uh, from coverage starting at 1 o'clock and then once again the kickoff for this match will take place like I said at two o'clock and uh, honestly i'm so so excited i'm i'm nervous obviously because you know as, as i said it's that time of year that uh, you know we want england to do well and i know they will do a decent job hopefully at this tournament it won't be a repeat uh, of uh, iceland from uh, beating us at the last tournament at uh, euro 2016 but uh, this is a new England and they and some of the players that played at the last World Cup, they have stayed with the team and there's some new uh, players coming through the ranks. So we have all all we have all of the um, opportunities to be hopeful and optimistic. And um, and honestly, what would it be for us to uh, go all the way? I mean, we are joint favourites, as we have uh, have mentioned in the last episode against France and Belgium, according to the betting company Betfair. So, um, honestly, I hope you're all in for a, a wild roller coaster ride for the next few weeks 
and uh, and I'm sure all of us and all of you watching at home uh, as well as myself uh, we are all looking forward to the tournament and uh, and I, I hope you are all ready for a very exciting ride uh, all across um, not just as I said because a majority of the tournament will be played like I said in our home stadium but uh, whatever happens, if we uh, fi either finish second in the group after our uh, free group matches, we could be possibly moving to uh, uh, potential matches over in uh, St. Petersburg in uh, Russia, or possibly also one in Rome, also, like I said, uh, where um, Italy are playing against Turkey in just a few days' time. But anyway, thank you very much for watching this video, and as always, if you want to be a part of this series, there is the link below at the bottom of this video, uh, so you can uh, be featured in this uh, series, where if you've got a, a match, uh, a match uh, score prediction, uh, and also talking about your um, moments or memories about favourite football players who have played for England in the past, at, uh, at whether it be at the World Cup or also at the Euros. And, uh, and we'd love you to be involved, even though that there's a pandemic still going on. That's not stopping me from making all of you out there feel part of this. And honestly, I don't want it to just be about myself. I care about all of you watching out there because that's what the tournament is all about. Bringing fans together from all across Europe and celebrating the beautiful game itself of football. And that's what it's all about, honestly. it's a lot. Football is a lot of other things, as you might have known already. And um, and it's more than just a game, as we have uh, we've known over the last uh, few months, especially with what's been happening in the world of club football as well, with the recent collapse of the uh, the European Super League, with the, all of the English teams, uh, the six English teams that uh, were put in there initially of Arsenal, Man United, Man City, Chelsea, um, also Tottenham Hotspur. They all got uh, penalised and uh, punished for uh, and fined for uh, trying to join, uh, and they got fined quite a lot of pounds of money. Honestly, it was um, it was not good for them, but uh, it was a suitable punishment because I mean, it was destroying the game. It's starting to Americanise the sport, and we don't want it to be run like that. Honestly. Football is all about the fans, and that's what happened over just a few uh, months back, if you might remember. And um, and also, uh, with that being said, also uh, go and have a quick watch of a, a particular video that I've also put in the video description box below of when football was saved, uh, especially uh, not just uh, in England, but also for, um, uh, for the Premier League clubs and also um, for... Uh, a majority of the players, or sorry, country, uh, uh, for clubs, uh, I was going to say not just countries, of um, joining once again the European Super League, and it collapsed immediately. I mean, it was quite an amazing and extraordinary on how it happened. But uh, anyway, all that aside, of course, there is a video uh, from my good friends that I've followed of uh, Fogden. They are also streaming it tonight, of course, Stephen and also, uh, also uh, Theo, if you're watching. Hi, guys. Massive fan and big up, uh, of course. Football's coming home, hopefully, this summer. I hope it is. Fingers crossed. Hopefully, we'll go all the way. And um, and I hope you also would follow me in this series as well. And uh, don't forget to watch their videos as well. I mean, they'll be streaming the, uh, the whole entire Euros 2020 tournament as well as myself, uh, focusing on England in particular. But um, honestly, I'm so excited for uh, for the next few uh, videos of uh, this series. It's going to be it's going to be quite special indeed. So with that being said, thank you very much for watching this uh, very, uh, of course, uh, fast paced episode. Once again, a football's coming home again. And as always, until next time, au revoir, adios, or wiedersehen. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you for in the next episode when we play our first group game against Croatia once again in the group stages of the UEFA Euro 2020 Football Championship. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.